What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Eat, Speak, Compete, the podcast where we talk about everything going on in the esports and gaming space. I'm your host, as always. My name is Yeso. I'm joined by my co host, Luke Shimona Hebrew, here for episode number seven. Luke, happy Monday. How are we doing today? Happy Monday, uh, episode seven, like you yep. said. So that's pretty exciting. Keeps flying by, I say at the beginning of every episode, but somehow we're still cruising, episode seven. We haven't been canceled yet. So. We haven't been canceled yet. So shout out to everyone who's been listening in. You know, I, it's, I know we're obviously just slowly rocking and growing the, the podcast, so we really do appreciate everyone who listens. And again, feel free to, to toss any feedback. Let us know what you love. Let us know what you don't love. Um, or uh, tell your friends, because obviously uh, we're arguably some of the most intellectual beings uh, that yes. will bring you the esports news mm-hmm. uh, from this room every week. So uh, I, you know, I'm just excited to keep the keep the ball rolling. And this week was a ludicrous amount of esports news, as always. So uh, doing good. Yeah, How are you? really a banger week. And I mean, we talked about it on last week's episode. All the big lands that are coming up. So yep. it's not going to slow down. You would kind of expect this time to maybe hit a bit of a lull, but. Not at all. There's tons of games coming out, tons of big news in the space, uh, and we'll start at the top. Smash Ultimate, we've Mm. talked about a couple of big tournaments over the last month. Another big one to talk about here is uh, Glitch 8.5 happened over the weekend, and we got the return of Esam. It was his uh, first land major since January of 2020, so since pre-COVID, pre-lockdown, and shows up, beats MKLeo 3-1 in both winner's quarters and in grand finals to take it all. And now Esam holds a 4-2 and two record overall in sets against MKLeo, which makes him the only player in the world with a winning record against Leo, having played him in more than two sets, which is a crazy stat. This is a hard one for me <laughs> uh, to tackle with delicate words. So I will go with nobody really plays Pikachu. Okay. The character is really, really good uh, because of its size. It's very difficult to hit. Falls mm-hmm. out of a, very light. Falls out of a lot of things. Uh, has crazy combo potential. Ridiculous kills. Um, the end of the grand set was incredible. Oh, the whole set, honestly. But yes, the end was yes. crazy. <laughs> it was crazy, dude. dude. So, like, the amount of combos and setups you can do with the character are, are crazy, and mm-hmm. it requires a a lot of SDI in the game itself, right? So it requires a lot of, um, you know, you have you have to know exactly what's coming in order to do the opposite thing with your controller, so that sure. the enemy can't do crazy combos, right? So. It's probably a matchup experience thing, I have to assume. You know what I mean? Like, MK Leo's been putting so much of his time and effort into his Byleth. Byleth yeah. is very bad against Pikachu in the matchup, so he couldn't play Byleth at all because it's like a 0% win chance. Mm-hmm. Like, you're going to get annihilated. Um, so, overall, I, 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 good for him. Congratulations to Esam. Back to back. He never shows up to tournaments, really, or he hasn't for a really long time, obviously. Sure. Um, and we, so we haven't seen him for such a long time that it's one of those things where I just don't think anyone has the matchup experience and the character's too good. And he yeah. just labs and plays so much. And he has so much competitive um, experience in the background, too, that it's just like it's like the perfect storm almost yeah. to be able to like create waves like that. So shout out to you, Sam. Good for him. And uh, I'm sure that you can't, uh, you, MK Leia won't lose that matchup again. I mean, I'm, I'm excited because I, I think, you know, it's cool to see a player be as dominant, dominant as Leo has been. Um, but I think it only becomes more interesting when you get guys like Esam that come out that seem to maybe be their kryptonite because mm. all that means is that Leo's going to level up, right? He's going to walk, he walks away from this weekend and it's going to be like, he's going to be pissed. He's going to be wanting to lab that matchup, figure out how to beat it. And knowing Leo, like he's going to find a way. And so I think it just sets up this amazing storyline for the next time we see these two late in another bracket at a big major, and it's going to be incredible. I, I, I can't wait to see them go again. Uh, again, I think Leo is going to come back and be uh, very, very well prepared for this matchup. Uh, also, do have to mention that uh, Cola. Moist. Yeah, Moist Cola uh, rounds out the top three there, and yep. that's a, a, a name who keeps cropping up late in these tournaments. has been looking really good, so obviously... Uh, Charlie and the guys over at Moist got to be feeling really good about this, and Cola showing up strong and, and representing well. Yeah, uh, Charlie did all right also. Uh, so Charlie the King was there just, just doing his best. But, yeah, shout-out to Cola. He's, he's 
offline mm -hmm. uh, growth has been super fun to watch and see. So hope he keeps getting at. I mean, he plays Roy, so it's always. I mean, it's such a diverse cast now in, in the top level that it's like mad fun. So yeah. Smash Ultimate's been a blast to follow. So I'd highly recommend you guys checking that out. Uh, VGBC are the people you should probably go check out if you guys want to watch some awesome content. They yes. put on the production um, of this weekend's glitch event, and it was absolutely um, phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Super fun to watch. Uh, and shout out to the boys on the desk as well. You know, we got EE, -E, TK, Co Connie, Connie, Coney. Jeez, mm -hmm. I got a, we got a Connie here <laughs> now. Connie He's getting in my head. <laughs> and, uh, but Connie, yeah, all those, all those guys out there always laying down the top tier pipe. So, short side note, I've been watching uh, a bunch of EE's content lately. Yeah. And first of all, it's it's incredible. It's I just, love Do You Know Black e People. <laughs> I think it's the funniest series. Yeah, EE's e. just his personality is great. He's really fun. Uh, yeah, he's obviously, awesome. he's pros pro. Like he's a fantastic caster, and just watching his content though has been really fun. And I went back and watched his reaction to the whole viral Airsdale clip. Oh yeah, 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 so funny. And it's and it's funny too because like I didn't know Airsdale that well or EE e. that well it, it, back back then, but just having like learned about who they are or whatever, and knowing more about like them just being friends and like they knew each other and then hearing him talk about that and every he's like you know you guys all blew this up he's like that's my friend like i'm just checking where she's going or whatever so but it was the, the memes that the came out of it memes, are so bro. good the glare meme is is fantastic so i agree smash uh, continuing to, to to crush it so we love it and uh we'll talk a little bit more about smash later but let's talk some overwatch uh pretty much all of this discussions we've had about overwatch since the start of the podcast have What's been this, less than positive. Overwatch 2 news? This is not Overwatch 2 news. Oh. This is the, I guess, last bit of news for Overwatch 1, and it is the Shanghai Dragons. Uh, they win the 2021 Overwatch League Championship, so they are world champions. And it's specifically a very big story because uh, if you guys are fans of the Overwatch League and followed it from the beginning, Season 1, the Shanghai Dragons went 0 and 40. In the inaugural season, they had a total map record of 21, 141, and 2. <laughs> so that is good for a less than 13% win rate in maps. And they went from that and getting just absolutely dogged on that whole season to sweeping the Atlanta Reign 4-0 to in the Grand Finals and being the final world champion on the original Overwatch. So a pretty incredible story for the org. Cool. <laughs> nice job, guys. You did it. You won that super coveted. Talk about starting from after. the bottom. Now we're here. Dude. I mean, yeah, cool for them. I'm glad they did it. I didn't I mean I don't think anybody listening to this or in the world knew it was going on, but I'm glad that <laughs> I'm glad that somebody won it. I'm sure that I love it. I'm like, let's have a little bit of a positive discussion about Overwatch <laughs> and Luke's going. This sounds like a great opportunity to dunk on Overwatch. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, uh, obviously, shout out to the organization. That's super sure, cool. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, I'm glad that it's, I mean, I'm glad that it's going to stop. I mean, the Overwatch League is a disaster. It always has been, and I think well, it should Well, and it's not going to stop, but it's going to be a very interesting next year because I think the plan is for the next season. I remember we had the discussion about, like, delaying the yeah. Overwatch League until Overwatch 2 releases, and now the plan is actually... It's going to start on a normal schedule, but they will be playing on a pre-release build of the game. Uh, I know they had like a halftime show at the Grand Finals where they had a show match on like the current build of Overwatch 2 that was fairly interesting. But yeah, I mean, I think the Overwatch League has a, a, a ton of issues. I also think just Overwatch as a game, like I remember when it came out, I played it a ton. I thought it was really fun, but I just feel like the game has moved to a place that it's just not its not a, a fun game to play for me anymore, at the very least. And I think it's lost a lot of fans. I love that it is, you know, there's still plenty of people that are extremely passionate about the title. But uh, I think it's definitely kind of soul-searching time for Blizzard in terms of how do they recapture what they had at the start of Overwatch with this new title. Because I think just putting out, like, a sequel is not going to do that. I don't disagree. Um, I don't. I don't even really understand like where the, or how or where they go at all. You know, like I don't. Like there's no competitive hope for the game at all, right? Yeah. Like there, there's no. There's no foundation. Like the it clearly didn't work the first time they did the Overwatch League. So mm -hmm. I'm sure the only reason that it, it got even got this far is because they invested too much into it. Mm -hmm. You know, like I'm surprised they didn't just scrap it. Like they scrapped everything else that they 
<laughs> that they produce, but it must just because be, it must be because of the sheer amount of funds they put into it that they yeah. really couldn't get out. But too big to fail. Whatever. I mean, we'll we'll really see. You know what Blizzard what Blizzard really ends up doing in general over these. Now we don't need to sit here and talk about Blizzard, but whatever sure. they end up doing over these next you know two years, I'd say is is like you said, it's going to need more than just releasing a sequel of the games that have all now yeah. died, which is a story later that will bring up yeah you're I'm super you're, excited for that one but you're well aware of our uh, our stance on blizzard i think we've gone through that we love them and they're the best Move yeah on. yeah <laughs> uh next thing up is some riot news uh if you're a big fan of league of legends and especially if you're a big fan of the lore uh you're definitely going to get some love here in the fall obviously uh mm -hmm. there have been announcements and this is a project we've been waiting for for a while but we finally got the official trailer for riot's uh, television series is going to Netflix, Arcane. Uh, it is going to debut November 6th, which is uh, supposed to be like a few hours after the World Finals are played. And the trailer looked incredible. I mean, I think every all the media I've seen about the show since they first announced it has looked awesome. And I am so excited. We're going to just get to see a bunch of iconic characters. We're going to get to see a more deeper dive into the world that League is is built around. And uh, I'm really, really excited. I think it looks it looks awesome. Yeah, I have to agree. I think that again, the, the trailer gave me goosebumps. Mm -hmm. The music was epic. The yeah. animation was really unique. Um, and obviously, the I come from you know OG pre season one and season one League of Legends days, right? Where sure. uh, not only was I Vi main for like a really long period of Ooh, time, back in the day. but yeah, also yeah, yeah. like I was playing when they released Jinx and when they released Vi and like mm -hmm. when, you know, there wasn't that much lore in comparison to now, Jesus. Back, well, um, and back when the lore sucked because it was tied to like how the game worked and it was just and, But weird. it was also very simple, you know, it was just mm -hmm. different clans, right? You know, with Demacia and all that kind of jazz, yeah. right? So, and I also played a lot of Legends of Runeterra, mm -hmm. which is also very lore driven mm -hmm. and another really cool way to kind of connect with the different lore characters. But regardless, uh, I'm actually a really big fan of Jinx and, and Vi. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I was watching it, you know, I was just like, oh, wow, that's that's Jinx. And then I was like, I think that's Vi because they're mm -hmm. sisters, right? So I was like, it mm -hmm. has to be Vi, but then you don't see it till the end of the trailer. Yeah. But the, her to actually have the gauntlet, which was hype. I, got, I was like, yeah. oh, yeah. But I'm super excited for it. I think it's going to be super cool. Uh, I hope that the animation holds up uh, in, like, the action setting mm -hmm. uh, that I assume most of the movie will be placed in. But based on everything I ever see come out of the League of Legends side or Riot side when it yeah. comes to, like, animated things, it's always insane. So I'm super excited about it. Um, and uh, I think they picked really good characters with really dynamic backstories for their first... Because uh, I think, like, they're, they're, they're up against Victor, who's, like, an evil scientist or something, right, or something like that? Yeah, uh, they've hinted at some characters. I know Victor, uh, at least the characters that we kind of know of now from the game that are going to be evolved, Vi, Jinx, as you mentioned, Caitlyn's supposed to be in there, Victor... Oh. Jace as well. Um, oh, I don't know that Victor is necessarily the villain. I think it's like a younger pre, you know, all the stuff that happens to him, Victor. But uh, I, I'm just really excited about it because I think that Vi and Jinx is one of the more interesting relationships that we've gotten to see uh, in the game. And now getting to see that backstory explored and how they became kind of who they are now, I think is really incredible. Um, also do have to mention that the show is going to be released uh, in kind of three acts over three weeks. So I believe the first will be three episodes that kind of first day. And then the week after we'll get the next act and then the, the following week. So I think it's the 13th and the 20th of November that we'll get those second and third parts. Um, and that's all through Netflix? Yes, all through Netflix. Um, I'm really excited. The only thing that I don't like is that I'm probably going to really love it. And then I'm going to get to the end of the third act and I'm going to be like, okay, where's season two this was really good because i have very high expectations and i think riot's going to deliver on it and then i'm just going to be like i've waited nine years for this i need more now well uh, <laughs> i mean on the on the bright end like they don't have any shortage of content sure so as long as like it does well mm -hmm. which it will yeah um i don't see any reason why both Netflix and Riot wouldn't be able to put resources behind it 100%. to amplify the the amount of content they can create. But, I mean, I, I kind of think of it as almost um, like the Marvel shows, right, where they've like got the you know the Loki and the uh, Winter Soldier, Falcon, yep. and all that kind of stuff. Where it's like, I feel like they come out slower than anyone would want, but sure. fast enough to the point where you don't get bored. And yeah. you, stay, you always kind of have, every couple of months, it's a boom, 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 boom. Right? You never feel like you're waiting for a, a half a year or a year for new content. And I mean, I think if you look at it, I think looking at Marvel is actually a very, um, 
good comparison when you look at the resources that Riot has and the, the wealth of, of creative outlets and tools that they have at their disposal. Uh, I think a Runeterra cinematic universe to an extent whether they if they want to do feature films or if they want to con continue to do miniseries or t television shows like Arcane, um, I think there is uh, one, an incredible amount of hunger for this kind of content. There are tons of passionate fans about the IP uh, that, the, you know, anybody's going to be down for anything. And I hope that Riot sees what, you know, comes from Arcane here and goes, okay, there's obviously so much more that we can pull from, so many different characters and places. Um, and I would love to see them continue to uh, explore this lore in different forms so i think it's exciting to finally see them diving into this because it's been so long the game's been around right we're coming up on i think 12 years since release and it's like okay we're here now it's it's time let's go yeah i think that you know and it's kind of similar in that sense where it, you know you have just like the comic book fans you have people who play the game sure but then also there's probably some, there's, there, there could be and hopefully a good crossover of people who don't play League of Legends but yes. can also still appreciate the film. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see like how that's perceived as well. Because, you yeah. know, it's almost like anime, right? Where when an anime movie goes into theaters, you know, it's only available for select showings on the specific week, on these specific theaters, yeah. right? Because they know that it doesn't have the same, although it's wildly popular, it doesn't have the same global effect that, you know, like a, a Matrix movie or a Star Wars movie might have, yes. right, in comparison. So, um, you know, I think that's pretty interesting, and, and we'll, I'm interested to see, like, if we see something more like that develop in the future, mm -hmm. where it's, like, kind of treated more like a... Uh, a very niche sector, or if they're able to, like, like Marvel, expand it into the global reach and yeah. get everybody even outside of the gamers so that'll be interesting yeah i think it's gonna be really cool i'm excited so november 6th keep an eye out for that uh i think it's gonna be awesome and if you haven't watched it go on youtube just look up arcane official trailer watch it it is it is really totally worth incredible. it yeah. crazy trailer very very cool um let's talk a little bit of valorant news uh, 100 Thieves, we talked about them a lot uh, in regards to VCT Master th Masters 3 in Berlin. Uh, they finished top four. They uh, do not, however, have a spot at Champions yet, so they have to play in the LCQ, which is coming up next month. And big change here for 100 Thieves, they are dropping Steel from their main roster. He was their in-game leader, and they... Had some rough showings at the end of Masters, and they have decided that the move is to drop Steel to substitute. They are bringing up a boy who has been a substitute for them for a while, uh, and it looks like Nitro uh, is going to take over IGLing for the team. Um, obviously, you know, things like this happen all the time in games like Valorant or CS or whatever, but in terms of the timing of it being right before you're playing your last opportunity to get into the world championship and it's the first you know valorant world championship uh the timing couldn't be worse but it may still be the right move it's really going to put 100 thieves though in a tough spot yeah i thought it was pretty interesting when i was looking at it because it seemed like it seemed like the change was strictly because of nitro like it seemed like because when I'm, when I'm sitting there looking at, like, the stats and the rounds and, you know, go, thinking back on, like, the games and whatnot, it kind of seemed like it was just they didn't like the calls. Like, mm -hmm. it seemed like it wasn't necessarily, like, a performance play. Because mm -hmm. right? his performance was fine. Like, it, I'm not saying it was great. I'm yes. not saying that, like, it was, I mean, again, it was fine. Yeah. It was, like, you know, whatever. Not the, not the point I'm trying to make. But I feel like on the in-game on in leader side, I feel like that's really where they felt like there was a struggle. And I feel like maybe he just couldn't let it go. So, like, I feel like... Since he wasn't able, he I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know exactly what happened, obviously, because it's like always behind closed doors. But to a certain extent, it just kind of feels like also the article was, I was reading the article, I was really confused. I feel like it was very poorly written, but uh, <laughs> and it, I, it just, it made, it made me feel like I was, it, it made me feel like it was, it was targeting, it was like, he's bad, he's getting removed from the team because he's bad. Mm -hmm. And like, look at, look at this KD, look at these stats. But then I, when I was remembering back and thinking about it and like looking at all the different things i i just it, it just felt more like it was a team mesh where he just wasn't melding in yeah. as an in-game leader and they needed nitro to rise to the in-game leader and if that happened there was going to be conflicts in the team with him not being the in-game leader anymore yeah so i feel like that's why they removed him more than anything else 
because I don't think it was a skill thing. But that's me. Yeah. I mean, and I will say, like, there have been quotes coming out from Steele saying he, you know, at Masters felt a little lost, felt like he was kind of coming up blank at times and having issues. So, uh, you know, if, if that's the kind of thing that you can't really be having when it's your last chance yeah. to keep your season alive. So it's obviously, you know, important to make sure the team is kind of clicking on all cylinders. I will say... The good thing is that obviously Nitro has a wealth of experience as an in-game leader. He was one uh, in his last few years in CSGO, so yep. this is not like a new experience for him. You're not just dropping a player into the IGL role for the first time. Uh, so Hunter Thieves has that benefit. Um, you know, uh, hopefully the fact that Boy has been around, has been substituting for them for a while, means that he can mesh in fairly easily. And hopefully it's, you know, even if it's just a little addition by subtraction, but uh, it's just going to be a very interesting storyline to follow. And Hunter Thieves is going to be, obviously, because of how they have played through the season so far. And now with this change, the biggest story going into the North American LCQ. Because yep. there's only one team of 10, that, or one team of 8, I should say, that will go. So it's going to be very interesting to watch. I'm looking forward to it. You got me thinking about League of Legends groups now. Yes, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about my, that. My brain like, almost started there. spinning immediately in the We're wrong direction. We're almost there. And I was like, yes. that's not the right game, Luke. Don't say that. <laughs> We're almost there. We will talk about uh, what's going on at Worlds. But uh, what we have to talk about next, though, is a little bit more Smash. Oh, really? Uh, there was a Nintendo Direct last week. Oh, God. And I can tell you, we as an office were all gathered up around one of the TVs here to watch the Nintendo Direct because we were all under the impression that we were going to get that final Smash character. And Nintendo debated us. Uh, the final <laughs> Smash Ultimate character is set to be announced on October 5th uh, during the final Mr. Sakurai Presents. <sighs> I, I don't know. I'm, I was really bummed because I was really excited, especially because rumor has it the character is going to be Sora from Kingdom Hearts. I am a huge Kingdom Hearts fan. That would make me super happy. Uh... What are you kind of feeling after getting jibated there by Nintendo? Well, I'm also a huge Kingdom Hearts fan. Um, I do believe that it will not be Sora. Uh, people have been waiting for Sora for, like, so many Ever. years that it yes. hurts. <laughs> so I doubt it. But, I mean, there's just there's just so many options. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I think it'd be, I, I hope it's a popular character. You know, sure. I obviously hope they pick, like, a, a, a Crash Bandicoot or a Spyro mm -hmm. or a... Um, uh, I don't know, who cares? Whatever. They pick, you know, a, a high-profile IP character yeah. from recent times, and the, that's not from some sh game from 1980. That's all I want <laughs> in the world, okay? I'm an easy man to please. But, you know, I don't... It doesn't matter. We'll just wait and find out. I think it's cool. I mean, I'm actually bummed that it's the last DLC character, because I've really enjoyed them just putting absolutely busted characters into the game every yeah. time. But if it's the last DLC character, then that means that next up is a new game, right? So... That's pretty cool. I mean, it'll probably be still a couple years or whatever it yeah. is. But um, regardless, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. It was a huge debate. I don't even understand why they would do this to us. Mm -hmm. such, such savagery. Um, peak the viewers, right? It was marketing yeah. play. Yeah. But is there, if it's not Sora, is there a mm. character you would want? I know Master I heard. Chief. That, and that was one that I was yeah. hearing. And I actually think in terms of thinking about Master Chief in Smash. No way. I'm like, you could, but I think you could make a really incredible and interesting character with Master Chief in Smash. I agree. Like, awesome. I think it'd be so cool. Yeah. Uh, I mean, look at Minecraft Steve. Yeah. They would just make him, they would just make, <laughs> Master Chief would literally be ridiculous. Have you seen, have, have you, on Minecraft Steve, have you seen the clip of, and I don't know what it's from, I think it was from is like a F? local, the F? Yeah. <laughs> that clip is great. This guy literally makes an F on the stage with bricks and then yes. kills the guy, yeah. Brutal. That was, that was awesome. That, uh, you know, Smash, y'all's community is just different. And I love it. I love it. I mean, all kinds of great content. We were, <laughs> Connie and I were talking about yesterday during the show, uh, all the great, the like Kira Flax uh, rage compilations that are very entertaining to watch, especially considering I've seen some of those moments live and I know you've seen quite a few of those moments live. Yes, I have. <laughs> I mean, I'm in a, I'm in a couple smash rage compilations on YouTube. Not, Not as, as a player, the, just good, like good, in good. the background being like, <laughs> Please pick up your trash. It's like I'm just like hanging out behind the guys like T.O. and or something. Like, that's so funny. Shout out to the Smash community. We love you guys. Keep just keep being weird. We're all about it. Nope. Oh, I will not right. on that. You uh, you asked for worlds. Worlds group jaws. I've got worlds group jaws. Um, so we find we got the groups uh, for plans and for the 
group stage of the World Championship obviously kicks off here in a couple of weeks, October uh, 5th. And we'll start with play-ins. Uh, group A is Home Life Esports, which is the fourth seed from Korea. LNG, the fourth seed from China. Infinity Esports, Peace, and Red Cannons. Play-ins Group B is Beyond Gaming, Cloud9, Unicorns of Love, uh, Galatasaray, Esports, I believe. Apologies if that is pronounced wrong. And then uh, Detonation Focus. Yeah, I'll be honest, that group. Cloud9 could do some damage in there. I mean, I think. I think Cloud9 could do some damage in there. I, I think it's pretty clear to say that, like, Cloud9. Got the best group should, for sure. Yeah, Cloud9 should have no issues getting first in that group. And with the way that Plains works out, they will play a single round robin against yep. all of the teams in Plains. And then the first place team in both groups automatically gets out. Their planes is done. They move on to group stage. Then the bottom finishing team in both groups is done. Third and fourth place in each group will then play each other in a best of five. And then the winner of that series will then play the second finisher from the opposite group to move on. And so the winner of that final, those final two best of fives join the first seeds and move on. I mean, I feel like Cloud9 should have no problem. They should, at worst, finish second and then should be able to win a best of five against really any of those teams unless, for some reason, the, the hard part is that you don't want to get second seed because then you're likely having to play against Hanwha Life. Or, or, well, no, you may not have to. If Hanwha Life and LNG take care of business, they'll be 1-2 in their group. But... If Cloud9 messes up and gets second seed, and then somehow Hanwha Life or LNG finish third or fourth, then you're probably going to have to face them in a best of five, and then I get really scared. Then I'm like, dang, is NA actually going to lose the team in play -ins? And I'm like, ah, no. Uh, but I agree with you. I think Cloud9 should be able to get out. I think Cloud9 should be able to get out. I mean, just looking at all the groups, I don't know if you want to go through them all, but... We'll go through the, the, those groups four, but uh, would you say probably Cloud9, ULL... Home of Life LNG, pretty easy picks there. Yep, I agree. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, let's go to the main group stage, though, because this is where things get really spicy. Uh, group A, very interesting. The oh, two God. reigning world champions <laughs> are in the same group, and they are probably the two best teams going into this tournament. I don't so know why this would happen. Damn one, Kia and FPX are all hanging out with Rogue in Group A. Uh <laughs> Congratulations, Damwon and uh, FPX, and making it to the knockout stage oh, of four worlds. Poor guys. Um, group B, EDG, Hunter Thieves, T1. Ugh. Group C is PSG, Fnatic, RNG. And Group D is Mad Lions, Gen G, Team Liquid. And honestly, if I'm a, a Western fan in general, I like this. If I'm a North American fan... I actually feel pretty good, especially if Cloud9 makes it out and gets put in Group C. They can only go to Group A or Group C. And if you end up in Group C with PSG, Fnatic, and RNG, like, those are not bad teams. Yeah, we can slide in second. But, like, I think that's a group you can get out of. Yeah, I agree. You think Hunter Thieves can get out? So, <laughs> okay, so I know that... Because I'm I like, know I that T1, know. I know that T1 is always scary when you think about him especially faker at a world championship yeah, as a beast. scary prospect Absolutely, right yeah. but this is a t1 coming in as the third seed from korea yeah. not as a top seed so this is not the t1 of years past now that doesn't mean they aren't going to show up and get the world's buff which they could totally could oh man but I'm i so think afraid of the world's buff it's like if there was all over. right <laughs> if there was ever a group where NA could actually compete with T1, like this is the year, and Hunter Thieves has looked incredible. I think they're uh, coming in where you can make things happen from any part of the map. Their jungler has been incredible. Yeah. So like, it's a tough test. Don't get me wrong. EDG is is very good. They just won, uh, you know, China. They just won the LPL, and T1 is obviously always scary. But considering 100 Thieves is coming into this, especially with Abadaga now, who was a revelation in mid lane compared to mid laners they've had in previous years, I think 100 Thieves has a shot. I think if you're still picking EDG and T1 to get out of that group, I don't think you're crazy. But I think if you come over and say, there's no way 100 Thieves gets out of that group, I'm like, you really don't. All right, but what about, what about Liquid then? Do you think Liquid can get out? Yes. 
Okay. I actually do. I mean, you think I Gen think G Mad Lions is sick. Yeah, I think Mad Lions. I sick. think Mad Lions is sick. I think Gen G is vulnerable. Dark horse. I mean, dude. and the thing is, is like Gen G's the dark horse, dude. Right? They're nuts. Co Korea plays. Korea right now plays the slowest games of any region in the world, right? Okay. And that is over the last few years not been good it's a reason why korea has not won a world championship and you know or, or hadn't won a world championship until damwon came and guess what damwon is like the not korean korean team because they play way faster than the rest of the region so if i'm looking at gen g and t1 and looking at kind of the current meta and how league has worked over the last few years i'm like these teams are very vulnerable because i think if teams can build early leads and accelerate games and not let them just scale to late and play crazy team fights, there's a huge opportunity here. Now you can certainly look at NA and go, but can you close out games against these teams? And I think there's a valid argument there. But if I'm Liquid and, and Hunter Thieves, I don't hate these draws because you avoided the two because best teams a. in the world. Because you're not in Group A, so you're like, dude, eh. you're like, cool, yeah. yeah. So it's gonna be pretty funny if Cloud9 gets put in Group A. That's going to suck. It's going to be a big L for that, our boys. It would be, and literally that's just, you say, you know, yeah. Rip Cloud9, you had a great year. Hey, good job, guys. You made it to Worlds. Yeah, good, you know, hey, hey try and get, beat Rogue get it twice. Up. Get it up. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, we don't have to go. I mean, that's enough. That's enough on Worlds. But overall, I'm super excited for Worlds. I think it's going to be sick. Uh, the group stages are going to be absolutely crazy. Do you want to do uh, some group stage predictions when we get the the full groups? We'll do picks. Super down. Okay, so we we'll do, do like a uh, fantasy draft. Or yeah, something. we'll do we'll do our pickums and we'll share them with you guys. So uh, definitely make sure to do those. I'm excited uh, about that. World's going to be incredible. Different world we can talk about. New world. Ooh. Big MMO releases uh, at time of filming. Today's Monday, September 27th. It releases uh, tomorrow. Uh, September 28th. I know you and I have played it a little bit. A bunch of people around the office have played. Uh, a lot of people are excited about it. Are you excited about the release of New World? Um, I, I'm i not not excited for the release of New World. Mm -hmm. um, WoW is dead. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. But <laughs> I think it's it's a pretty dry gaming realm right now if you don't just like to play shooters. Sure. Which I don't really like to play shooters at all, <laughs> uh, personally. Like I do, because you know it's, it's you know some of the best games to play with other people yeah. are shooters, right? So obviously multiplayer wise, and I'm very excited for Halo, and I'll probably fall very heavily in love with that sure. game. Um, but in uh, you know I, I'm always looking for you know different RTSs or MMOs and stuff like that to to try out and play. I do think New World was uh, fun enough when mm -hmm. I when I played it. You know what I mean? And I think that with the lull of games that exist right now that um, it's definitely coming in at a good time. Yeah. So I think that I wouldn't say I'm excited for it, but I'm not excited for anything else. So sure. I would say, and I'm I'm the same with you. I mean, MMOs have never been my cup of tea. I tried New World. I thought it was I thought it was fine. Uh, you know, the the one opportunity MMOs are really going to have to capture me is going to be when Riot releases theirs that they're working on, because obviously I play I I will try any Riot IP. Uh, and they've, you know, I really enjoyed actually Legends of Runeterra, and I'm not typically into those kinds of games. It's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's actually really well done. Yeah, um, I agree. It's a really well made done game. Just, so, just nobody cares because it's a card game. But it's <laughs> fun. I, I like it. Yeah, I think it's really good. Um, so, like, I'll try that. Uh, it give That'll probably be the MMO that I kind of give the most kind of concerted, concerted uh, effort to, to try and love. Um, I will say, though, that while it's not a game that's going to capture me, uh, it seems like, and maybe this is largely a result of what you're talking about the the game market being a little dry especially maybe on the mmo front uh it seems like the gaming community is very excited about new world i have a ton of friends that have been literally counting down the days i know when it got delayed they were super pissed because they've been waiting for this game for so long uh it seems like the gaming community as a whole and especially like mmo fans are very very excited for new world coming out do you feel the same yeah can we like go to wow so i can just like talk about it all at once can we talk about that WoW yeah yeah so too? we can talk about wow here as well because yeah. the next topic we're going to talk about is the legendary wow guild apes are calling it quits so just rating. like i i feel like a really 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 big portion of the members of the esports community that exist mm -hmm. are wow players from times past yeah because like most of our generation that grew up played mm -hmm. WoW. Almost yeah. like our whole generation played WoW like a way too much, right? So, and it was the only, it's the only real MMO 
Mm-hmm. Like other people play a couple other MMOs here and there, but like I mean, it is, it is the most iconic like, MMO, bar none. There's so, no so, debate. So not even close, yes. right? That it's like everything else almost like doesn't even count, mm-hmm. right? So it's like so many people play WoW um, that it's one of those things where it's like we all kind of understand it, we all know kind of how to play it, we all have that background. So with New World coming out and WoW dying at the same time, I feel like that's really why everyone's so excited about it because all mm-hmm. the WoW players who can't play WoW anymore are dying inside yeah. because they don't get to play a game that you can literally just play for endless hours and you never feel the way you feel when you lose one Valorant game. Sure. You know what I mean? Like you don't have to like, you know, you just, all dubs. You just play WoW all the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, you know, whatever. So I, I think that that's a really big piece of it and obviously the story that you know, we're talking about specifically is is apes closing down the guild, mm-hmm. right? And they, I believe, were the like the original like Ragnaros killers mm-hmm. from back in like Vanilla. Uh-huh. So it's like, which is like the the original raid, the original big raid boss from the original World of Warcraft release, like way back in two thousand two or whatever it was. Yeah. Um, and these guys have been around that whole time, and for a guild like that to to close down because they just can't take the game anymore mm-hmm. after. What twenty years or whatever? I don't know. What, 19, 18, Yeah, twenty years. Nineteen years. A long, fucking a long time. time. <laughs> it's crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like that just that just tells so, such a big story of that it's you know it really is over. Yeah. Quote unquote for WoW in the sense of you know the community that used to be there and yeah sure people might still play it but it's pretty much completely overran by bots. Yeah. At this point, so now it's just a matter of like, will it go free to play? Will they, you know, like. Do you play WoW Classic at all these days? Not currently, I do not. No. I did, though. Yeah. Okay. Just a little bit like when WoW Classic first came back. Yeah, and just, me and Kale leveled, leveled up. I, I mean, character. I remember going to the office and seeing, like, Kyle, like, in the queue to get in, like, yeah. the day WoW Classic released, and, like, he was super excited, so. And, that, and again, it's super cool, right, because we wanted to relive that nostalgia, the mm-hmm. classic servers, and it was honestly, well, it was super fun, but, mm-hmm. you know, it's just, what are you going to do? Yeah. You know, the game died. That's okay. Uh, but with New World... You know, it's it's one of those situations where it might have really ideal timing. I don't think the game has any longevity in the sense where, you know, everyone's talking about the pitfalls of the game, one of which currently is that there's no end-game content. Mm-hmm. Very easy thing to solve. You just make in-game content sure. while people are leveling, and then you release it as people start to finish the content, right? Which makes sure. sense, right? I don't think it's that's what WoW does. That's what everybody does, right? Yeah. No, nobody had in-game content before <laughs> before anyone got there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I just don't. I just don't know if like they got to be. They just have to crush it. Yeah. You know what I mean, they just have to be such on top of the timeline and their player base in order to keep people interested and to get people to the point where they can actually all raid. Like the type of communication that pe- that original WoW players have through like forty man team speak raids. Yeah. Like good luck, bro. Like good luck in this age being able to do that. You have to automate the whole thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? It has to be all instant. Uh, looking for raid, whatever, easy click and join 40 man group button thing, yeah. right so um i mean they couldn't ask for a more incredible opportunity oh yeah as 100%. a developer mm-hmm. so if i was them i would literally raise as much money as i possibly could and have a whole team just be flying. selling it to everyone as like all every investor is like we need as much ki- money as possible because wow. we need to create content yeah. faster than wow yeah or faster than you know our players can finish it yeah which has got to be pretty fast because mmo players are crazy they do have a good opportunity but you know it's it's i feel like this it's the combo for the storm right now Mm -hmm. so i'm really hoping for an mmo wave Mm -hmm. that might be able to you know because we could use some innovation in the space like the the mmo world has been very stagnant for a long time sure i've played the same version of wow for 20 years so (laughs) and we'll have to see i mean we have no necessarily necessary Mm -hmm. timeline on like riot coming out with theirs but that could be part of that and you see new world coming out so it with wow dying it's not just you know, the developers in New World that have the opportunity. It's everybody who wants to get into that MMO space and carve out some of that and get in on those players. So It's a crazy game. They're, right they're very hungry. MMO players are always, always hungry for new content. Facts. Which, you know, as all gamers are, but... Grinders. Last topic to talk about today. What do you got? Fortnite. Oh. And Balenciaga. Woo! So, uh, if you guys... Fortnite's crazy (laughs) busy, man. These guys just won't stop. If you guys missed out, Fortnite is doing a collaboration with the iconic fashion brand Balenciaga. They have released a collection of merch. And (laughs) just looking through it is just... It's absurd. So, uh, 
it is a bunch of different stuff, jackets, t-shirts, hats, etc. And I, I just want to give you a couple highlights here. The cheapest item from this collection is $395, and it's a dad cap. It says Fortnite on it. it. has some, you know, some stuff on the brim. The most expensive item in the collection is a just south, south of $1,300 denim jacket. Mm. $1,290 for a denim jacket. The average price of any piece in that collection is $722.00. And fifty cents. Wow, that's awesome. What are your thoughts on this, Luke? Um, well, you know, hey, it's, Epic's always doing crazy collaborations. The yes. the rate at which, <coughs> excuse me, the rate at which they pump out these um, collaborations is incredible. Mm -hmm. Like I can't believe how how fast they can just sign celebrities and giant brands and all this stuff. And yeah. it's super cool seeing Balenciaga on top of all the other big boys that have been, you know, Louis Vuitton and everyone else who's sure. starting to jump more and more into the gaming space. It's absolutely crazy seeing it happen firsthand. Yes. So that's first off is just kudos to, again, both sides mm -hmm. of the equation. Um, and one of the questions actually that uh, I'll, I'll pose back to you in this scenario is who do you think's the, uh, who do you think's the bigger winner in this scenario? Do you think it's, Epic Games and Fortnite, or do you think it's Balenciaga? Balenciaga. You think it's Balenciaga? Yeah. Um, and I don't, I don't necessarily disagree. You know what I mean? I, I think it's a, definitely a combination sure. um, of, of both because uh, for Fortnite to be able to continue expanding its, uh, its IP in a sense of like how much it's, I mean, it already feels like it owned the whole world for like mm -hmm. a year, right? And now that it can continue to utilize that presence to connect with brands like Balenciaga, which you wouldn't think would connect to that that base at all. Like, it seems yeah. like so out of left field, right? Like, who plays who plays Fortnite and would wear Balenciaga merch? Yeah. I mean, when you ask, like, who wins out of it more, I feel like it's Balenciaga specifically because I feel like, as a company, this collaboration gives Balenciaga access to an incredibly wide audience that probably a majority of them maybe have never heard of the company and even if they can't afford their stuff now that like brand name is now in their head they'll you know years down the line if they can afford it now have that oh i remember that sick i would use air quotes around that merch collab that valenciaga did with fortnite and maybe go get their stuff um I don't feel like Fortnite gets that same return in terms of accessing Balenciaga fans and bringing them to Fortnite. So I think, and you know, and I don't necessarily think that like Fortnite has to be the big winner out of this for this to be like a successful collaboration necessarily. So I think it's like for them, it's fine. They probably go into this knowing like Balenciaga are the big winners, but like continuing to partner with these big brands and do so successful things will like roll into the future and allow them to continue to sell that to, to other brands. So I think if you're Fortnite, like an Epic, that's fine. Um, so the problem I have is I just like, I look at the merch and then I also look at the, the, the prices and I'm just like, bro, like this Fortnite shirt from Balenciaga that just says Fortnite on it is not like cool or worth anywhere near that kind of money. Okay, but think about, you so, think about it. So maybe I'm not, and I'm not the target audience. Yeah, yeah. Let's be clear. So I'm not yourself, a Fortnite player. Well, put yourself I'm not in a Balenciaga fan. Where, put yourself in the setting where I live in Europe. Yes. Okay, I live in Europe. Okay, cool. And I, it's nice out there. It is nice out there. <laughs> and I am a micro celebrity sure. to a certain extent, right? And I have a relatively unlimited budget when it comes to my clothing. Yep. You know that scenario. And I like Fortnite. Yes. I literally have zero items that I can buy that I wouldn't be like that aren't ten dollar Walmart T shirts, right? Yes. So in order to create a higher quality brand, branded Fortnite item yes. that's you know hand knitted or whatever the crap in, embroidered and right, yes. it's more than just a printed T, yes. at least, right? We'll take mm -hmm. we'll, we'll move that far. So assuming that's an actual nice T shirt that you could probably find yourself yes. spending sixty plus dollars on if it was blank, mm -hmm. right? Now it has the Fortnite branding and you get to rep the Balenciaga brand at the same time. Yes, that with some nice ripped jeans and quality boots, like you're a total freaking European swag lord. I guess when I look at it and. Maybe it's just that Balenciaga isn't like the right brand to expect this from. Mm. But when I look about it and, and like, and again, I don't like Fortnite, but like 
when you think of the IP, I feel like there's just more, I feel like there's more interesting and creative things you could have done in a merchandise collaboration with Balenciaga. Like the extent of the creativity is literally just the Fortnite name. And like there, it looks like I, maybe it's like Fortnite in different languages. I'm not sure, but that they have on like mm. the back of the denim jacket or on the, right, the gotta, brim of the hat. We're, we're talking about literal like style gods here, right? Yeah, for you sure. And, that and maybe that's just print like an epic anime T-shirt from Hot Topic and then sell it for three hundred dollars <laughs> on their website. You know what I mean? Like, I understand where you're coming from, but they like the the simplicity of the yes. of the and the brand itself. Like yes. that's the whole that's the whole piece. Is like they're again they're selling it to somebody who is looking for that. And, and again, yeah. that's maybe it's that. It's like Supreme, dude. And, and again, maybe that's me a crowbar and not all... understanding that that's not a realistic expectation <laughs> yeah. for a brand like Balenciaga. So I guess, you know, hey, look. Dude, Balenciaga, yeah. If you're a Fortnite fan, if you're a Balenciaga fan, and this scratches that itch for you, good for you. Go drop a few grand on some t-shirts and denim jackets. I'm going to be honest. If I had the option to buy one, everybody I would wins. buy one. I think they're sick. Fort Epic, hook, hook my boy up I here. would literally, He's I would wear fan. the crap out of that, and I would talk so much smack yeah. to everyone I walked by. So, Like my shirt right here? Yeah. Which more worth more than your whole fit. I, so. will, I, will, I will thoroughly recognize <laughs> that I am by no means the target audience for this. I clearly am. That's why we're Ninja <laughs> and, merch. Yeah, and I don't like it. I will say I want to... <laughs> <laughs> Wait, the the no, I'm not talking about the ninja sweatshirt. I actually think the, the ninja no, I, sweatshirt I, I, is pretty I dumb. I need to talk about the Blinzy okay, thing. Okay. I just think it's funny. It's like, all right, well, that was a good conversation. Appreciate it. I think it's dumb, and I don't like it. I Moving do, on. <laughs> I do want to drop one quote because this is kind of off off of this this uh, collaboration sure. that uh, from the Kotaku article that I read because uh, I think this is a really interesting quote, and I I, I kind of agree with it to an extent. Uh, the quote says, Fortnite exists in 2021 simply as a means of pulling the entirety of popular culture into its gaping maw. It is Ready Player One without the literary aspirations, the Avengers Assemble moment, only it's Rambo, an NFL player, Travis Scott, and Master Chief stepping through the portals. Fortnite has no culture, it has no theme, it has no feeling, it is just a platform, an app store with guns. Do you agree? That's a pretty good statement. I feel like that. that is relatively yeah. accurate, and I feel like you can look at that in a positive or negative light, depending on what you want from Fortnite and what they want to do with it. Like, I think there's very multiple different interpretations of like Fortnite being that platform with no theme or culture. Yeah, I mean, I I don't disagree. I think Fortnite's super cool. I love with everything, all the creative stuff that they do with the. Uh, the concerts and the mm -hmm. different, you know, the political stuff they did the other the other week, like that yes. whole experience and the the different collabs, right? Putting mm -hmm. the football players in the Marvel stuff, the, the being able to be Thanos, you know. Yes, all, I love all the different things they do. I think it's super cool. I just wish that they put an inch of that effort into competitive gaming. And they put zero inches of that into competitive. Yep. That's all. I mean, it's it's hard. To, again, it's all just a money thing, but it's like sure. they have so much of it that it's like reduce the price pool by half and put that into the operations of it. Bro. And I mean, hey, <laughs> like literally, just try. I can and, and we can <laughs> complain about that all we want. Epic's still crushing it. They're still making money hand over fist. Oh, no one is. And no they're one incredibly is, successful. So no one like, is doubting. As their, much as we want to dog on them for this kind of stuff, no like, one is doubting their content creation happen. or yes. their funds that they are able yes. to create. Their partnerships are all the tippity top. And even their dude, even their the amount, the fact that they can do in-game tournaments mm -hmm. to the success that they can is so sick. Yeah, I just wish that they would just let the comp players play in like competitive Fortnite mode, and then have like a Fiesta mode where there's like all this stuff's going on, and there's lakes that fly and <laughs> and mountains that jump, and I don't know whatever else happens at Fortnite nowadays. But either way, we'll see. I don't know, but Fortnite's cool. All kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, what have you been playing this week, Luke? Not Fortnite. Um, Same. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Uh, what I've been playing this week? Uh, a little bit of a uh, little bit of Halo Infinite. A little yes. bit of a little bit of Valorant. Um, Halo Infinite is super fun. I'm gonna play so much of that game. Uh, Valorant Fracture is a terrible map. Delete it. Um, still playing some Hearthstone Battlegrounds. Kind of stuck. They nerfed frogs, so I'm having a hard time because I was. Um, I was one trick in that to the top of the leaderboard, yeah. so I don't know how to that do it. That top 200 else. got a little bit harder. Yeah. Well, they nerfed me. 
Middle of my run. Toxic. Toxic. <laughs> um, what else have I been playing? I want to say I played something else, but I, I don't know. I guess not. No. Valorant, okay. I guess. I'm mostly just Valorant and uh, Infinite. Okay. Mine was uh, definitely Infinite. Got in the uh, the multiplayer fight, which has been very cool. Um, I'm definitely going to play the shit out of Infinite when it mm -hmm. releases. Uh, I'm excited we're getting another weekend of multiplayer flight this weekend, too. We're going to get to play the new big team battle. Yep. Which I think looks really cool. I'm excited for that. Um, BTB is not typically my go-to mode when I play Halo titles. I'm more of like a SWAT. I want to play competitive modes, yep. things like that. I was a big Lone Wolves player in 3. Um, mm, but I'm so excited to test it out. Um, I've had a lot of fun playing over the weekend. We did a little uh, little stream on Saturday. We had uh, our friend Why Not come through and play with uh, me and, and Alpha. We played 15 games on the stream. We went 13 and 2. Damn. We won our first nine games in a row. So we were, we were popping off. So. Mucked them up. Yes. Job, so boys. I had a good time. Definitely going to play that a lot. Been playing a ton of Valorant as well. Continuing the rank grind there. Uh, oh, also I played been... a game of League yesterday. Oh, nice. How'd that go? I won. Nice. Good job. Thanks. Um, other than that, uh, a lot of Pokemon Crystal version. Hmm. Been playing Crystal on my 3DS. It's Solid. been a lot of fun. I just, I, I can just get absorbed back into that game. I turn, I crank the volume up, What's listen the to the all team the music. Uh, I got a uh, Quilava right now, uh, a Poliwag that's close to evolving. Uh, I've got a Ghastly that's very close to evolving uh, to Haunter right now. I just got the free Spiro that I'm probably going to level up. That'll be like my my flying type. Uh, I want to find a Scyther. I just got the Golden Rod. So I want to get the, the bug catching contest and go catch me a Scyther. Because that'd be sick. Scyther is super cool. I've been playing uh, Ty the Tasmanian Tiger too. He got it right this time. <laughs> Me, me so Luke talked about that on the show last week, and I'm. This is an old title that I didn't really know of. Uh, and then we finished the show, we stopped recording, and our uh, Connie, who's our, our producer, walks in and goes, "It's Ty the Tasmanian Tiger, Luke. You're calling." And he's like, "Didn't I call it that?" And he's like, "No, you called it the Tasmanian Devil." <laughs> Look, dude, Looney Tunes, other random platformers. Who cares? It's all the same. It's thing. all the same. What does matter <laughs> is that I hit 25% completion this weekend. Rock and roll, boys. 75% more to go. How hard is that game to complete? Is it pretty tough? Um, I wouldn't say it's tough. It's just a standard platformer. Yeah. You jump around until you do it all. All right. Well, that's what we've been playing uh, this week. Let us know what you guys are playing. Let us know uh, what you guys want to talk about. Reach out to us on Twitter anytime. We'd love to hear from you, hear some feedback. Uh, Luke is at Shimonahe. I am at Caster Yeso. Uh, thanks for, so much for joining us, guys. That's seven episodes in. Uh, we're getting real close to double digits. I'm excited for that. Um, enjoy the rest of your week, guys. Uh, and don't forget, we're going to do those world pick -ems. So when we get uh, here in about a week, I think, it may be next episode, uh, if pick are available, we'll start doing... Uh, stuff for our group draws when we can do that. So get excited for that uh, and make sure we are on, you know, your favorite podcasting platforms. We're on Spotify, we're on Apple Podcasts, we're on YouTube. Please subscribe, uh, follow the show and share it with your friends. We'd love to uh, just get to continue to talk to more and more of you guys. So that's it for Eat, Speak, Compete, Episode 7. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.